Hi, I'm Dr. Blanche Gruby, and today I'm going to talk about thumb sucking. And as you might already notice, I've got company. This is George. George is going to show us some very important parts of the skull and why it's important for thumb suckers. Um, see this large hole in the bottom of George's head? Okay, this is called the foramen magnum. And the foramen magnum sits on top of the atlas, just like that. And the atlas is the top portion of the spinal column. And it is where cerebral spinal fluid finally makes its last push up into the skull. So we have cerebral spinal fluid being pumped from the bottom of the spinal cord, pump, 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 all the way up until it gets to this foramen magnum. When it does, it squeezes the cerebral spinal fluid, and then the cerebral spinal fluid wants to bathe the brain. And so all of the bones of the head on top of the mandible, all of the bones of the head here, expand and then contract. Now what I just said was really very interesting and, and actually the opposite of what we were taught in dental school. We were taught that, you see these suture lines here? There's a suture line here, here, and over here. We were taught that when a baby was born, they had a soft spot here called the fontanelle. And you had to be very careful not to touch the fontanelle because the baby's brain was right beneath it. And as the child grew and reached the age of one year old, the sutures here closed and they would never open again and they, they would never move. Well, we now know that that's just not true. Take a look at the skull. We can see it's made up of a tremendous amount of different bones. This is called the mandible. The mandible is one bone and this is called the maxilla. The maxilla, or the top jaw, is made up of several bones. And if you take a look inside the middle here, you can see there's actually a suture line that runs right up the middle. So the maxilla is made up of a right side and a left side. It's actually made up of six different bones. Well, when the cerebral spinal fluid gets pumped up into this hole, the bones of the head expand, and this suture down the middle moves also. And all of the bones of the head here expand and contract. It's not something that you're aware of 10 to 12 times per minute when it happens, but it is something that somebody who is very skilled at uh, cranial sacral work can actually feel the bones of your head moving. So that's all very interesting. It's one of the reasons why you never want to have a bridge locking the right side of your head to the left side of your head up on top, these top teeth here. Um, it would be okay to have a partial denture here that has some looseness to it, but not a good idea to have a permanent bridge locked from here to here. Because if these bones can't move, because there's a bridge here, then these um, the bones that are attached to these bones can't move, and then the bones that are attached to those bones, you know, you know the story, the song that goes, uh, this bone's connected to that bone, right? And it just goes on and on and on. Well, if you have a bridge from here to here and these bones are locked, the other bones of the head are going to have a very difficult time moving whenever the cerebral spinal fluid gets pumped up. So that's one of the things I wanted to bring to your attention. The second is that thumb suckers, children who suck their thumb, will put their thumb usually right here, right in the middle, that suture right between the right side of the maxillary bone and the left side of the maxillary bone. Well, just above that is a bone called the vomer bone. And it, it is a vertical bone that kind of supports the maxilla and goes up to the brain. Well, thumb suckers put their thumb in their mouth and as they're sucking, they're pumping that vomer bone and increasing the number of times that the cerebral spinal fluid gets pumped into the brain. So it's very interesting that thumb suckers 
have approximately 20% higher IQ than non-thumb suckers. So why are we always yelling at these kids and telling them not to suck their thumb? Well, it's because we don't want them to have buck teeth when they get older. Well, that's not always true. Not all thumb suckers develop buck teeth. Um, and buck teeth, very often, when the child stops sucking their thumb, the buck teeth will correct themselves. It just happens naturally. And um, if it doesn't happen in a small percentage of the cases, then the child will need to have orthodontic treatment. But most of the time, thumb suckers not only give themselves a higher IQ, but whatever movement of the teeth is created while they're sucking on their thumb, it actually self-corrects as soon as they stop sucking and as soon as the lips um, and the musculature of the face push everything back down into position. Um, so as you can see, I'm one of those people that actually would rather see a child sucking on their own thumb than on a pacifier, which is made out of plastics that dissolve. The body doesn't know what to do with these plastics, by the way. They have actually discovered uh, pieces of plastic, molecules of plastic inside people's muscles. Uh, the body does not know how to digest and how to metabolize plastic. So not a good idea to have um, a pacifier placed in a child's mouth 24-7. They're better off using the thumb when they need it, and when they don't need it, let it go. Absolutely. So that's my little talk on thumb sucking today. As you can see, I I think thumb sucking is great. You never have to worry about the child losing it. It's always with them. It's right where they need it. It's always the right temperature and it actually will increase their IQ and give them a little bit more room for their teeth and for their tongue and everything else that they're going to need as they get older. As always, I want to thank you for listening today. Um, continue to come back to the website because we will always have new topics to talk about today's dentistry and Dr. Blanche Gruby's opinion. And so I want to say thank you and thank George. Say thank you, George. Oops, George almost bit me. Thank you very much.